Welcome everyone. This is a video about scientific fraud in the Kotal murder case. It's an issue that really was not very well covered by the mainstream media, with a few exceptions, and I'll put some notes in the description below about those exceptions. My name's Ian Yarwood, and I'm a lawyer here in Perth, Western Australia. You know, when most people think of fraud, they tend to think only of financial fraud. They think of the global financial crisis, Wall Street, and Ponzi schemes such as the one that Bernie Madoff oversaw. However, scientific fraud is also a significant social problem. Within courts, not just in Thailand, but around the world, both scientific fraud and indeed junk science are often used to secure convictions against perfectly innocent people. Within Thailand specifically, the police are renowned for planting ev false evidence false evidence, to convict innocent people. They're also renowned for extracting false confessions under torture, and that is a huge problem in Thailand, especially in the very south of the country. They are also renowned for destroying evidence that could exonerate uh, an accused person. In fact, I will be adding a link below to a little video uh, and a section of a video where a speaker called David uh, Streckfuss in the Foreign Correspondence Club of Thailand highlighted that within one particular year the conviction rate in Thai courts ran at 99.2 percent. Now that's an absurdly high conviction rate and it gives the impression that the people making the decisions about the guilt or innocence of uh, accused people the, the people making those decisions are actually the, the police and not the courts. The, poli the courts just tend to look like rubber stamps. Now turning specifically to the Kotal murder trial uh, where uh, we had a situation where two young men uh, from Burma with absolutely no criminal records they were found uh, guilty on the strength of DNA evidence that was uh, supposedly um, linked to, uh, supposedly linked to uh, some mixed semen samples that were supposedly extracted from the body of the female victim Hannah Withridge. Now an inter interesting thing happened just before the trial and that is that the Thai defence lawyers requested some of the original mixed semen sample so that they could have that independently tested. And surprise surprise the Royal Thai Police said Oh, it's all been used up. Now that is an absolutely preposterous thing to say because I asked a DNA expert who will be uh, mentioned in an article that I'm about to read out. I asked uh, this DNA expert by the name of Jane Torpen how much uh, of the original mixed semen sample would be required to conduct the relevant test. And she told me that it was actually five microliters. Now to put that into perspective, if we look at this little teaspoon here, that teaspoon would hold uh, five millilitres. So in other words, a, a tiny teaspoon like this would hold enough for 1,000 tests, yet the Thai police said that they'd used up the whole lot. Which kind of indicates that either they're lying, or they're grossly incompetent, or both. I think that they're both. But anyway, within 24 hours they contradicted themselves and they said, oh no, we didn't use it all up we still have some material here, we have some DNA material here. But in fact they didn't have any of the original DNA material. What they had was uh, amplified uh, uh, material. Now the amplified DNA material is uh, a bit like a photocopy. It's something which has merely been recorded. Now within courts in places like Britain and uh, the United States and Australia we have what's known as the best evidence rule. So a photocopy of a passport is not going to cut the mustard. A photocopy, photocopies of other documents are not going to cut the mustard. We require original copies because, as you'd all appreciate, it's very easy to doctor uh, a, a copy of something. It, it's a bit like you, you can change a photocopy just like you can uh, photoshop a, a photograph. And if we looked at a uh, $20 banknote like this from Australia, it would be easy if someone took a photocopy of this, they could change the 20 to a 10, they could change the serial number, they could change the signatures of the treasurer and, uh, and other people on the banknotes. So 
the amplified evidence doesn't cut the mustard. And in fact, the Royal Thai Police, under the relevant standard, international standard, known as ISO 17025, they were required to actually hold back some of the original mixed semen sample, if they ever had such a mixed semen sample, they were required to hold that back so that it could be independently tested. But there was no independent test. Now, um, I'm just going to start reading through an article that was written by Lindsay Murdoch. I telephoned Lindsay Murdoch in uh, very early January of uh, 2016, uh, within two weeks of the judgment being handed down in the Kota murder case. And I told him that he uh, would do himself and his readers a, a great service if he could interview Jane Twarpen and get her views on uh, the evidence that she saw. She was actually invited uh, to assist the defence lawyers. She was invited by a, a British activist by the name of uh, Andy Hall. But unfortunately, the uh, Thai defence lawyers, for uh, whatever reason, did not uh, decide to use her uh, and put her onto the uh, into the witness box, which uh, was could either be seen as a blunder on their part, or it may well be, to be fair on them, they could have been threatened, or there could be some other reason why uh, she was not called to give evidence. But uh, uh, looking at it uh, from the outside, with uh, it would appear to be a significant mistake. Okay, so just bear with me, and I will read through this article, and um, I'll uh, take it from here. So this is what the article looks like. Well, that's the, the heading, and it's still available on the internet. This was published in both the Sydney Morning Herald and in the Melbourne Age in Australia, which are two of the premier newspapers in Australia. And, uh, okay, so it's written by Lindsay Murdoch, and it reads as follows. Bangkok, full colon. An Australian uh, forensic scientist has questioned key DNA evidence that led to two migrant workers being sentenced to death for the gruesome murders of two British backpackers on an idyllic Thai island. Melbourne-based Jane Torpen says documents detailing how Thai investigators matched DNA from Myanmar workers Zhu Lin and Win Zhu Tun, he's also known as Wai Pyo, uh, to the victims were not provided to a Thai court in contravention of international DNA analysis and reporting standards. She also points out that the DNA matching, a complex procedure requiring meticulous care, can only be determined on the basis of statistical probability in the population and none was presented to the court. Zorlin and Waipio have strenuously denied murdering David Miller, 24, and raping and murdering Hannah Witheridge, 23, on Koh Tao in the Gulf of Thailand uh, on September 2014. In the article he says uh, the 14th of September, it was actually the 15th. The Christmas Eve convictions prompted protests against uh, ac across Myanmar and strained ties between the neighbouring countries. Myanmar, of course, is the new name for uh, the, the country pre previously known as Burma. The case has also focused attention on Thailand's treatment of millions of migrant workers and damaged Thailand's tourist industry. Zhu Lin and Wai Pyo, who were working on the island, were arrested after weeks of intense pressure on police from Thailand's military rulers the media and diplomats to solve the problem, or to solve the crime. Police said the pair confessed to the killings, but both men later retracted their statements, saying they were tortured. And in fact, one of the uh, prosecution's own witnesses uh, gave evidence to the effect that, yes, they did look rather bruised and beaten after they returned to their cells after questioning. The article continues. After a 21-day trial, three judges of the Samui Criminal Court found that the accused 22-year-olds bludgeoned Mr. Miller to death with a hoe and then jointly raped Miss Witheridge while she lay unconscious after a late-night beach party. In a review of the DNA evidence obtained by Fairfax Media, Ms. Torpin said no documents detailing the collection, movement, handling and chain of custody of DNA samples were provided to the court, which is required under United States and United Kingdom codes of practice. Then uh, the next paragraph is a quote. quote. The scientific records were not provided for review for whatever reason, and thus as, as a scientist, I could not perform a scientific review 
or determine whether these records accorded with the principles of the standard, end quote, she said. Ms. Torpen, an independent consultant who has examined DNA evidence for police agencies in Australia and the UK, has received several forensic science awards, travelled to Thailand expecting to testify in the case in July, in fact she went there in September, but she was not called to the stand. When I say uh, September, that was September of uh, 2015. Thailand's best known forensic expert Dr. Porntip testified for the defence that the crime scene had been poorly managed and the collection of evidence contradicted the principles of forensic science. The prosecution provided only a one-page summary of their DNA tests, some of it handwritten, with parts crossed out and corrected along with four supporting pages. Ms. Torpen said case file notes from the Thai Police Forensic Laboratory should have been produced that showed a continuate a continuity of exhibits with the rationale for any scientific testing. Quote, without these, any scientific review is limited and thus itself does not achieve a proper standard, end quote, she said. Ms. Torpen stressed her comments were not a criticism of the court, but a review of the DNA evidence that defence lawyers say will form the basis of an appeal. Andy Hall, an, adv an advocate for migrant workers who advised defence lawyers in the case, said the defence requested additional DNA-related documents from the prosecution, but they were not provided. Quote, I can confirm there were no documents in the case file that explained methods of DNA testing or any assumptions from the police side or explanation of results in detail, end quote, Mr Hall said. There were also no probability statistics for matches of DNA, nor was there any documents at uh, court specifying evidence to support the sub this uh, substance slash biological nature of the DNA profile, end quote, he said. Mr. Hall said the prosecution referred to DNA coming from sperm, saliva and skin, but provided no evidence to back up the assertions. He said the defence lawyers are confused how concerns about the DNA evidence were not raised or noted by the UK government, which sent a team of detectives to review the investigation. David Miller's brother Michael told reporters minutes after the judges delivered their verdict that justice had been delivered. Now, I'll just stop here for, or pause for a moment. That was actually quite tragic that Michael Miller uh, made uh, the speech that he did outside the court. Uh, it was akin to him, uh, well, he was praising the police, so he was effectively praising the people who helped cover up who the real perpetrators of the murder of his brother were. It was like something out of a uh, Greek tragedy. And one would hope that David Miller did not subsequently turn around and invest any funds with someone like Bernie Madoff. The article continues, Thailand's military ruler uh, Prayut Chanocha has also angrily dismissed criticism of the case. They have a right to appeal, don't they? Isn't this the same legal practice all over the world, he said. Ms. Torpen has worked on the uh, case on a pro bono basis, which was very generous of her. Now, I'll just tell you a couple of other things about Jane Torpen. She's written four books on uh, forensic evidence and DNA evidence. She happens to give uh, seminars for barristers in Australia on uh, forensic evidence and on DNA evidence, and she's given evidence in, in excess of 100 trials in the United Kingdom and in Australia. So she's a bona fide expert, and in fact I've seen her in court, in uh, uh, the appeal court in the Supreme Court of Western Australia, where she appeared in front of three judges, and her evidence was not challenged uh, by the opposing party in that case. So um, she's someone of um, you know, a very high standing, unlike I would suggest anyone within the relevant police lab. And in fact, after that article was written, I uh, made uh, inquiries for many months with uh, the Thai Bureau of Laboratory Quality Standards, and they're the ones who uh, were uh, who issued the relevant standards to the uh, police laboratory in question. And eventually, I was able to extract from them, eventually, that the relevant police laboratory did not even have the proper accreditation to conduct the tests 
uh, on that uh, uh, mixed semen sample at the time that they supposedly conducted the tests. And in addition to that, Jane Torpen noticed when she arrived in uh, Koh Samui in September 2014 or 2015, she noticed when she uh, first saw the document that the police lab and the prosecution were, were relying on, she noticed that there was no stamp or seal on that document. Now those stamps and seals uh, she always sees whenever um, evidence is produced in court uh, because they certify that the relevant laboratory has the correct accreditation and also those seals and stamps certify that the particular report was conducted in accordance with the relevant standard, in this case uh, ISO 17025. So what was produced in court was what called an unaccredited, uh, sorry, um, uh, an unendorsed report and uh, it's also a breach of the standard for the uh, police laboratory to allow their unendorsed report to be used in evidence in a trial. And uh, there were other things that Ms. Torpen noticed immediately, such as the fact that um, you know, there was no statistical analysis and everything about DNA testing is predicated on statistical analysis. So the, um, the document that was produced was probably as good as something which a, a preschooler could have produced with a crayon at school and handed that in. And unfortunately, the Thai court elected to accept it, which was um, with it with the greatest respect to the judges, that was certainly a mistake for them to do so. Now, if you found this uh, video at all useful, please give it a thumbs up and um, perhaps press the um, subscribe button as well, because I will have some other videos coming out shortly on the issue of the DNA evidence and um, articles that also feature Jane Torpen. And uh, in fact, the reason why I'm producing these is that the mainstream media, both in Thailand and in Britain, um, really uh, did not focus enough uh, on the DNA evidence. They didn't really get behind um, uh, you know, the science behind assertions made by the police or um, comments made by uh, spokespeople, unofficial spokespeople like Andy Hall. So I'm sort of filling a bit, um, I feel that, I, that I'm filling in a little bit of a gap that the mainstream media left behind. So thanks again for uh, watching. And also, if you could share this on social media, that would be uh, fantastic. And uh, keep safe. All the best. Bye for now.